Point six talks about realistic applications of lines. Now, over there on the sideboard, we've got all the standard forms of the lines. You've got to know those for Friday. Just got to know them. Okay, that's something that's fundamental. It's going to come back over and over again. Mrs. Gregerson was in here this morning. She talked about how much you're going to use lines. What I want to show you this morning is just how we use this information and draw some conclusions from it. So, really quickly, we have this graph here. Okay? Across the bottom, we're always going to have time. And on the vertical, we're always going to have the number. In this case, that's the score. And over here, the time is in weeks. So let's just try to figure out how are we going to plot these points on this graph. The low weeks is 6. The high weeks is 18. How many tick marks do we have across the bottom? Let's take a look. If we went 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So maybe this is 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So you've got to figure out your scale. That's your first step. Sorry, I'll get that unlocked a little bit. On the vertical, we go 24 to 57. How do you want to count on the vertical? We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 spaces on the vertical. How do you want to count on the vertical? Give me some thoughts. You want to count by ones, by twos, by tens? What's going to be the easiest? By fives, let's see how that works. 0, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That would work. So there's 10, there's 20, there's 30, 40, 50, and 60. Okay, so let's plot these points. 6 and 24. Go ahead and plot all the points. 6, 24. 8, 36. 10, 36, 12, 33, 14, 48, 16, 57, and 18, 57. So that's all the data based on how much you practice, what your score is. Would you say the more you practice, the better your score is? Would you, would you say that? Can you draw that conclusion? Okay? Based on the data, would you say that? Okay, now comes the judgment call. Thank you, Justin, or uh, Luis, for getting my pencil out here. I want you to take your pencil, and I want you to put your pencil down on the graph in such a way that it best represents and goes through the general points as best as possible. Lay your pencil on there so it kind of looks like it's going through whatever the trend is. Obviously where mine is is not the case. Now here's some possibilities. Do I do end point and end point like that? Do I do the high points? Do I do the low points? Do I do this point? Is that the trend line and this is an abnormality down here? Ryan, give me some thoughts. The first point, so like that. That's covering up four little dots. Is that kind of an average? Okay, that's what we're going to do with them. So I'm just going to draw a line about like that. And that's called my trend line. Now, based on that, I want to write an equation. An equation has two pieces. It has slope and it has y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, all you need to do is go right here and say, where does it cross at x equals 0? Now, this is 6. That's 4. That's 2. So you've got to project a little bit out. This could be a little bit more challenging. Let me get another piece of paper here. I've got to project this out. Slide this over here. That's 4. That's 2. That's 0. Our line is coming down here at 0. So my question is, what's that value right about there? About 12. So 
the y-intercept is 12. Do you see why I can't say the y-intercept is 24? Because that's not x equals 0, that's x equals 6. So my y-intercept is 12. I just extended my graph to make it all the way over to 0. Maybe, Sam, I would have been better choice, better choice at the beginning to make that 0 right there and go up to, you know, by 2s or by 4s or something like that. Don't know. But neither here nor there. Now, the other idea I need to find is the slope. So I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to pick another point. I'm going to choose that one. That's 57. From 57 down to this point, which is 36, how far is it from 57 to 36? What is that distance? How much? 19. 19? 21. 21, okay. What about this distance, the x from 18 down to 10? That's 8, right? So what does 21 over 8 represent? That's our slope. So let's change that to a decimal. What is that as a decimal? Someone divide that for me. 2 point something, right? 2 point... What do you get, Ash? Okay, so 2.6. So our slope is 2.6. So my, my equation is going to look like this. y equals 2.6x plus 12. What does x represent? The number of weeks you study. What does y represent? Your what? Your score. So you could predict then based on the information. You need two pieces of information, TJ. You need where it crosses at x equals 0, and what is the slope. Why did I choose those points? They just were on the line, that's all. You could have chose any two points. If you had chose some points along that line, you should get a number close to 2.6. Yours might be 2.5, maybe Caroline's is 2.7, but so long as it's close to 2.6, your trend line and my trend line are going to be the same. So that's the idea there. All right, let's look down here. Micah. I went on vacation a long time ago with a young man named Micah. That's where this name comes from. So draw a line for this card creation issue that Micah is making homemade cards. Tell me what you want me to do. Say when to stop. There. There. Okay. So let's draw that line. Okay, so here's our line for our card creation. She's making homemade cards. On the vertical, we have the number of cards completed. On the horizontal, we have the number of hours. What is the y-intercept? What does it look like? On yours, did it go through the 0, or did it go through the 1, or did it go through below there? It looks like 0. Would it make sense in zero hours you've made zero cards? So I think zero is probably a pretty good, uh, pretty good answer for a y-intercept. Now we got to figure the slope. I like this point, but I want to try to find a point that's right on a number. So I'm going to use this one right here because that's nine and thirty-five. Then I'm going to go down here. And this one right here looks pretty good. That's 4 and 15. So let's find the slope. 35 minus 15 divided by 9 minus 4. 35 minus 15? 20. 9 minus 4? 5. Slope is 4. So my equation is y equals 4x plus 0. Give or take... How many cards is she making per hour? Four. And you can make a prediction then. Sometimes does she work faster? Yeah, sometimes does she work slower. But if you were predicting as a manager how many she's going to make, you've got a target. Her goal is about what? To stay on pace. 
four per hour. Okay. That's taking statistics and taking data and using it. That's why we do all this line stuff, is this is an actual application where we're going to use this kind of stuff.